so we, you mentioned multiple universes. Uh, I think there, there, are men, there are at least a few different ways in which there might be multiple universes. Yeah. Or way, but the, the, there is a many worlds interpretation of quantum mechanics that I think to the, I think to, to the alarm of most people who hear about this uh, is very well subscribed among physicists. Right now, where do you come out? You might want to summarize what, why one would be tempted to believe in in multiple universes, yeah. but these are, these are universes wherein, you know, trillions upon trillions of nearly identical copies of ourselves are having nearly identical conversations, you know, just, w w but, but with every different variation of what's possible. So essentially, everything that can possibly happen, happens somewhere. So there was, a, there was, there's if, a if it's compatible with, with the laws of law. physics. Yeah. yeah. Right. So there was, there is a universe. If you subscribe to this theory, uh, there is a universe in which we had this conversation and then, you know, took our clothes off in the middle of it, right? <laughs> uh, for reasons that presumably made sense in that universe. Wait, wait. Let me calculate. Uh, Not compatible yeah. with laws of physics. Yes. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. This this will not happen in this universe. Rest assured. Uh, but. This is, this is actually believed, right? Now, this, this on its face, to me, is the least believable thing on offer. Right? Yeah. And yet this is, this is not only yeah. subscribed but to, by someone, this is, this is actually just plain vanilla quantum mechanics now. Uh, I wouldn't go that far, no. But I think, yeah, there's like great controversy on this. I mean, David Deutsch, who you mentioned, is one of right. the proponents of this way of thinking about quantum mechanics, but I would not call it the vanilla interpretation of quantum but, mechanics. But I think if you poll people at a physics conference, you get something it's like changed. 30 percent or something that, that believe it. I don't know if 30 percent I would call vanilla, but, um, y you know, it changes over time. And, and uh, I, I, first, maybe it's worth quickly saying what it is, yeah. and then I can give you my yeah. perspective it. on it. So, so, so quantum mechanics broke with the past by saying that whereas Newton in classical physics taught us that you can, given the state of the world now, predict how it will be five minutes later or a million years later using the equations of motion to evolve it forward in time, quantum theory came along and said that's the wrong way of thinking about things. If you know everything that you can know about the universe right now, the best you can do is predict the probability, the likelihood that you get one or another outcome when you run the equations forward an hour or 100 million years into the future. Now that sets up an interesting situation because, for instance, if the law says that there's a 50% chance that the electron is here and 50% chance that it's over here, right? When you go to measure the electron, you don't find sort of half of it here and half of it here you always find one whole electron either here or here. So the question is, if you find the electron in my left hand, what happened to the possibility of it being in my right hand? Right. You might say, well, that just goes away. The problem is just goes away is incompatible with the mathematics. The most straightforward reading of the equation suggests, if you just use the most straightforward interpretation that's right there, the equation suggests that there's actually one universe where indeed you do find it in my left hand, and there's another universe where you find it in my right hand, and therefore there's a copy of me in that universe with two hands, right. thinking that there's only one unique outcome, but there are two of me in distinct universes under that same illusion, that there's only one universe, but the God's eye view, if you don't mind me using that metaphor, is that there are, <laughs> there are, there are, this there, are, there are many universes out there, and basically anything that's allowed by the laws of quantum physics is represented in this menagerie of universes. Now, if you ask me, do I subscribe to this way of thinking about quantum mechanics, my answer is no. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, um, I'm not saying that it's wrong, I'm saying that we're not at the point yet where we can answer that question. Because there's a gaping hole in the structure of quantum mechanics that maybe doesn't get enough air time. Quantum mechanics, in my view, and many others, but this is not universal, is not a complete subject. We're missing a solution to the so-called quantum measurement problem, which simply is the question, when you measure the position of a particle like an electron, how do you go from this weird, fuzzy mixture of multiple possibilities? It's over here and it's over here, and there's some kind of fuzzy mixture of the two. How do you go from that fuzzy probabilistic description in the equations to the single definite reality that emerges when you actually undertake the observation. Right. How do you go from fuzziness to definite reality? 
And this is a question that we do not know the answer to. And since clearly in thinking about where the possibilities go, the act of measurement or observation is intrinsic to the very question that we're talking about, until we answer that question, we can't really come to a conclusion on what the right way of thinking about quantum mechanics is.